But as I was praying about this meeting, I just began to feel God said, I want you to connect the blood and the anointing. I want you to connect the blood and the anointing. So that's what I want to do tonight. So let's look in Leviticus chapter 14, verses 13 through 18. This is, this is the, the law concerning the cleansing of a leper. How many of you know we're all lepers? I mean, lepers just simply means to be unclean, to be full of sin, whatever, something that's devouring our life. That's what leprosy does. It's not just a physical disease. It speaks of a spiritual condition. And when, a, when somebody would get healed of leprosy, they would have to go present themselves to the priest. And, and part of the cleansing of these lepers, or the ceremonial cleansing of these lepers, was what I'm about to read to you. But there's, there's principles in here that I want you to see. So Leviticus 14, 13 to 18. Then he shall kill the lamb in the place where he kills the sin offering and the burnt offering in a holy place. For as the sin offering is the priest, so is so is the trespass offering. It is most holy. The priest shall take some of the blood of the trespass offering, and the priest shall put it on the tip of the right ear of him who is to be cleansed, on the thumb of the right hand, and on the big toe of the right foot. Now, so, so watch, he put, he put, he put the blood, he, he took it in his hand, he put it on each one of those places, which clearly, I mean, you don't have to be a theologian to figure this out. I mean, if he puts it on the ear, that means you're being consecrated to hear. If he puts it on the thumb, you're being a consecrated to work. If he puts it on the, the big toe, you're being, a, you're being consecrated to walk. So, so he said, you'll put it there. And he said, and the priest shall take some of the log of oil and pour it into the palm of his left hand. Then the priest shall dip his right finger in the oil that is in his left hand and shall sprinkle some of the oil with, it, with his finger seven times. Everybody heard of the seven spirits of God? That's what that is speaking of, releasing the effect of the seven spirits of God. He will sprinkle it seven times. It says, and the rest of the oil in his hand, the priest shall put some on the tip of the right ear of him who is to be cleansed, on the thumb of the right hand, and on the big toe of his right foot, on the blood of the trespass offering. So he put the oil on the blood. Everybody say they put the oil on the blood. Then the rest of the oil that is in the priest's hand, he shall put on the head of him who is to be cleansed. So the priest shall make atonement for him before the Lord. So the oil went on top of the blood. Here's the principle. You ready? The spirit will only anoint what the blood has cleansed. The Spirit will only anoint what the blood has cleansed. If you want an anointing, a mantle from God, then you need to let the blood move and operate in your behalf. Because the Spirit of God, the anointing of God, comes on what the blood has cleansed. Let me show you a scripture. Ephesians 1, 13-14. It said, in him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. Notice what he says. It says, once you believe, one watch, believe what? Believe what Jesus did for you. Believe in his sacrifice. Believe in his body and his blood that was offered for you. That that, that that act, it legally brought redemption into your life when you accept it. When you believe that, watch this. It said literally that you are then sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Why? Because the Spirit always comes upon what the blood has done. And our belief in it. So believing is when the blood is activated. We believe what Jesus did for us. 
Now, let me just give you three things from the scripture I just read out of Ephesians. Number one, the Bible calls him the Holy Spirit of promise. I mean, you know, it's the spirit that dispenses the mantles. It's the spirit that dispenses the mantles. Well, we can talk about, you know, God giving us the right to, but listen, only as we move under the unction of the Holy Spirit and in agreement with the Spirit do we see the results of that take place. So the Holy Spirit, watch, is the promise. Ephesians 1.13, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Well, Luke 24.49, Jesus told his disciples, stay in Jerusalem, don't leave. He said, but tarry until you are endued with power. Behold, I will send, watch, the promise of the Father. The Father had promised this. I mean, we could look at so many scriptures, but let me show you one. Acts 2.33. It says that Jesus, being exalted to the right hand of God, having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he poured out this which you now see and hear. Notice, so Jesus dies on the cross. He's resurrected. He appears. But then they watch him disappear into the clouds. Ten days later, the Holy Spirit, the power of the Spirit comes into the upper room. And they're all baptized in the Holy Spirit at that moment. Do you understand? When that happened, guess what it was? It was a sign that Jesus had reached the Father. Why? Because whenever he reached the Father and he took his place at the right hand, now as Lord of all, God the Father gave to him the Holy Spirit to pour out on those who belong to him. The coming of the Holy Spirit was a declaration and a testimony that Jesus was now positioned at the right hand of God as Lord of all. Something else that scripture says, it says the Holy Spirit seals. Ephesians 1.13, we're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Well, that word seal means to stamp. It's like a signet ring that, that the king would wear, that he would, he would put his mark in wax. And that seal, as long as it was not broken, it was secured. Watch. The word seal means to stamp for security or preservation. Watch this. To protect from misappropriation. Did you know that when the Holy Spirit comes into your life, he not only protects you, guards you, keeps you for eternity, that we have a confidence that we're going we're, we're gonna to make it through and we're going to stand before the God and we're going to be acceptable before him. We're going to be granted entrance into his eternal kingdom. But he also protects us from misappropriation. Watch, from us misusing our life. Listen, when you receive the anointing of God, the mantling of God, when you are sealed with the Holy Spirit, he will protect you from wasting your life. From using your life for something other than what you are called to. That you will end up fulfilling the intent of God for your life.